He's a border collie. Yeah. They're supposed to be reactive. They're right. supposed to be very predatorial. Did you see that move? 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 I gotta go chase it. Maybe they shouldn't be moving. Who are they? Like that's just their breed and you can't take that away from him. Uh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Leave it. Leave it. No. Hey. So try to stand up. Try to stand up. Stop. Right. What you want to do is just give him alternatives. Hey man, let's work over here instead. He's like, all right, I'm gonna go to work today. Who can I harass? So what's going on? Well, we are um, a rescue. I got him around two. He's great with the other dog at home, but he gets, um, reactivity when he sees other dogs and he redirects. So the last time I walked him was way before COVID. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and he bit me in the side. Is he good with people? Like if I let people in the house, he gets a little cranky about it, but. Um, what would be your overall goal? I, I wanna get him to just stop the reactivity, to find, you know, not have to like, I know that a lot of the people that I worked with, they, you know, stressed keeping him like treat, 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 get him to be distracted away from what he's doing. I'd like to be able to just kind of be able to get his attention and not have to do that okay. treat thing. All right, let's just stop and sit again. Good. Boy. And then we just hold that. Is it? So we're like, yep, there you go. So I wanna work on some dismantlement here on your, your handling. So we'll go outside where there's not gonna be any other dogs or there's gonna be less dogs. I call it dismantlement because it's kind of like what we're doing as the dog starts to build, we're dismantling his build. Mm -hmm. We're kind of unpacking a little bit on what he should do alternatively. So some of the reactions will warrant a quick correction. The objective is to simply walk by these dogs, hopefully on Saturday, uh, you'll get to that point. But in between now and then, you're trying to figure out how to decrease his build to help him get over his reaction. So as the dog starts to load on that thing in front, you do an inside turn. Let's go race. Good job. Good job, buddy. You just cut back that way, okay? Outside turn is this. Race heel. Good, so it's just turning outside of the dog. Race heel. Good. And then the recall, or the, oh, I call it the drawback. Race, come. Good, yes, and this is where your payments will come in. Those are the three things that you can use to dismantle things. Okay. Throughout the process, you're gonna be blending in corrections. You're gonna be blending in uh, also uh, payments and rewards. So throughout the process, it's a really quick switch. You're gonna be saying, hey, let's do this, let's do this. Good job, nope, that's bad. Good job, nope, that's bad. With a dog like this, that's how his mind works. That's how you're gonna have to operate and handle him. So we're gonna do this again. Now, if he doesn't go, you're gonna pay him with that, okay? You're gonna pay him with that food. Ah. Good, pay him. Good. good and boy. now heal away, heal away. Heal? Perfect, nice heal. work. Really good. Good stuff. Good boy. Good. All right, guys, we're gonna go grab this dog that Kaysen's with and get this dog a little bit closer. And we're gonna test it out. This is a very straightforward how to stop, how to manage, how to determine what type of dog you have with reactivity. It's a very straightforward video. So this is gonna be good for you guys at home. Make sure if you guys like this, hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment, let us know you're enjoying it. It's completely for free and we want to help. There it is. I just saw that build and then there right after, boom. So if we can get her to understand that build, we're gonna be in great success because uh, if you can determine when the dog starts to build right before they pop off, or right before that that simmering pot of water boils over, if you can remove it from the heat, you're gonna have a really good opportunity to be successful with your reactivity. So this is a build. No, yep. heel, stop, <laughs> ah. So in that situation, just draw back and recall really quick. Come, good boy. Turn now straighten yourself fall. back out and heal. There you go. So when he's looking and looking and looking, that's- Well, the duration of the look is going to predicate his bark, judging okay. by what I've seen in this first session. But I just wanted to show you what some of this dismantlement can do, because now he's looking at the dog, making a good decision, getting paid. He's looking at the dog, wait, now pay him. Good, so Boy. earlier you were talking about distracting him. Yes. Now, the training that you had done before was, he looked and you said, hey, look at me. Yeah. That's That doesn't help him learn. No. So what we're doing is he looks just like this, Wait, 
If he makes it, now pay him. That's oh a good boy. decision. That was good his job. decision. Yeah. It wasn't like, hey, look what I have. Okay. When I went to the behaviorist, her short periods of time doing something similar to he, what he was doing, but not exactly, I didn't get it. Like, they wanted me to treat him, like give him treats the whole way through and not fix the problem with recognizing it first, you know? And, and I think that how he showed me, I think that was useful information. Probably the best I've had. Where's he got a... Easy, easy. Yeah. So it's pay attention to me, buddy. Good boy. Sit. Eyes. Okay, break. Good, yes, good boy, yes. Good, so decisions were made there. I kind of weaned off the obedience just for one second because I wanted to see what he would do, mainly because if I needed to prepare myself for a reaction, I could, but also it was a good experience for him to smell the other dog. Some reactions only stem from frustration and fences and leashes, and right. once you get them close, then the he reaction goes away because that danger or suspicion of what they are goes away. And especially if he hasn't really had a bunch of exposure for a couple of years. The famous dog is here. Yeah. So yeah. Cute. <laughs> Just let him kind of soak this up for a second until it becomes too much. He'll tell you when it's too much. There. There you go. Sit. When you do your drawbacks, just take your time. Just sit. You don't have to run. Just kind of turn and then backpedal a little bit. Good. Right. There you go, good engagement. There you go, nice work. That was perfect. Really good. See how my um, hand and my leash yeah. are almost behind you, behind me, but not like, mm -hmm. yep. Good. So as I move forward, good. I'm just, I'm using my leash to kind of keep him right here. Yep. So this is what I want you to work on. Just a little bit of red light, green light. His one little uh, right. Uh, recommendation just keep the leash behind me was like oh that was easy and it worked stop and sit sit that's how it, that was perfect really good that's how you want to do it he, he get he hits this threshold where he's like I can't hit and then you just move him and you move him right back walk him away okay yeah. so that was good you're, you're not going home with it you're just really quickly giving him his space coming back in to handle it and over time the goal is for him to not get to that point right not to yeah. get to that red zone he kind of builds up, he releases. He builds up, he releases. Here. We're gonna do one more cross heel and then we're gonna put him up. Okay. Really good job. I'm impressed. Heel right by here. Sit. So as he starts to get in front of you, you gotta remember, cut him off, bring him back. So the other thing that you can do to help with this reaction is to just do some engagement skills. So I got a little bit of food here. Uh -huh. Now watch how I just kind of keep them on me. So what you can do, hey. Yeah, God, good. Tease them. Yeah, you're just keeping them engaged. He really is very smart. <laughs> oh yeah, smartest breed in the planet. As he gets closer to said dog, he, he starts to build, you take him out. He starts to build, you take him out. And then just the closer you do and the more you do that, the less of that build happens. Okay. So as you got closer you, and removed him and then went straight through, that's how you were able to do that. Good heel. Good heel, buddy. Good heel. Good heel. Yes, split Good the job. C here. Well done. Good Keep job, going. Race. There you go. Good boy. Okay, so what I would do is with a dog like this that has some reactivity, mm -hmm. I would be in your yard playing tug like this. I'd be doing some healing exercises and then going out. Okay. Yeah. Get some of this, drain some of that Border Collie tank that mm -hmm. he has. So I'm just going to work on a little bit of tug work around these other dogs mm -hmm. because what he's gonna do is he's gonna get take his focus on me and then get frustrated and he's already got something in his mouth. So that tells you that if you give him something to do when there's other dogs present, like what we've been doing, inside turns, outside turns, mm -hmm. but this tug toy will be, could be a big piece to your puzzle as well. But I think if you can do a little tug session in between your healing and your walking or even before you go for a walk. Okay. Again, you'll just release that tank naturally instead mm -hmm. of him releasing it on other dogs. Because look how much he actually cares about other dogs. Yeah, he he's not paying any Yeah, he doesn't care. Just come. Good. Nice work. Oh. Ah. All right. Inside turn. There you go. Good job. Stay. Nice heel. Good boy. I have to tell you, I think you have the patience of a saint. Thank you. 
when I was a kid. I would put myself in the other person's shoes to feel how they would feel. Mm -hmm. And that's how I always lived my life when I was a kid. I'd always be friends with everybody, no matter, you know, whatever. Yeah. Treat people like you want to be treated. Exactly. Well, I work in healthcare, so I, yeah. you have to have, it's like 45 years now. You have to be empathetic to everybody. Yeah, my job usually is pretty easy because I don't get anybody that, well, I usually don't get anybody in that makes it hard. Well, they're here for a reason. Right. Uh, no. Oh, 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 oh. Leave it. Leave it. No. Hey. So try to stand up. Try to stand up. Stop. When you get tight spaces like this, mm -hmm. keep them motivated. Let them know what he's working for. But you come out. So again, just working on that engagement. And then at, at, as I come through like this, good. Ah, sit. Good, and we're just gonna hold. Now the most important thing here is the duration. The okay. longer he sits here with this dog, the better he's gonna get. Okay. Holding, looking. Ah, sit. Good. So right now, with handling and positive reinforcement, sit. Yes, good, I'm just helping him. The dog's there, he looks. I'm changing gears, I'm inside turns, I'm outside turns, I'm sitting. I'm using my, my, my collar, I'm using my food to make all of this work. You have to be able to switch. That's what makes you a really good handler is you, you have all this different things in your box. But if you're not, and you're faced with a problem that you can't handle, right. you're not gonna win that war. The biggest thing I learned is that I can recognize his signals now. That's, that's always the hardest thing with him. And I think because I avoided it, I didn't really learn the things that would trigger, I mean, I knew it triggered him and I was, had avoided having him around dogs for so much that I wasn't even sure if he would do it when he was here, but it was like half hour in, boom, he did it. So, and you know, Tom's tools to fix it and to deal with it is what I needed to see. And I think that I, I can sense it now as much as see it, which is really what I need to do. I know that he adapts to the dog, which is an important important feature when you're doing a dog because not every dog is different. They all, I mean, even out in the outside thing this morning, you could see all the different personalities in all these dogs and you have to adapt to what that dog needs. And these other two that were with me, they, they had different issues. So he's good at it. He's good at adapting it. Everybody looks good. Super proud of the race, specifically. He's absolutely crushing it. He's that close to another dog and he's wagging his tail and he's happy. He's making better life decisions. That's what we like to see here at the Upstate Canine Academy. It's not that the dog's really doing anything wrong, it's that they've never been told they can't do it. And it just makes sense to me.